coming back topics we'll discuss about application security see i'll tell you an example when we talk about application security one thing i which i always want to say is basically application security means let's say for example i am deploying an application on premises okay i am deploying an application on premises see what happens is when i am deploying an application on premises either i can have a physical machine or virtual machine or everything like that and i can deploy in the normal way let's say i'll give an example just want to tell you something let's say for example so consider let's say we have some from 10 years back okay not mm -hmm. 10 years let's say 20 years back uh, you are developing an application so while developing an application 20 years back do you have cloud computing in mind no right so the whole application yeah. is completely developed only for on premises the application is only developed for mm -hmm. on premises that means yeah. that let's say for example uh, and definitely even I, I don't know how much you know but still i basically i i, I learned a generation where basically we have a computer and computer is something which is a, a godlike thing for us at that time because basically it is not easy mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. or let's say that's fine okay yeah. but what happened now it's accessible to everybody based so at that time when you say the word computer okay when you see the word computer people say Krish, now even a, sing, a child who is just born one year it, that, that, and he, my daughter also she's uh, three year old she know how to operate a mobile phone now mm -hmm. so basically this is how it works okay. right at that yeah. time when you develop an application that application is completely defined or planned for on premises that means that right. the control the security controls the application libraries the backend databases like db2 etc those kind of all these things are designed to be on premises mm -hmm, so what mm -hmm. happens is when migrating that application to cloud platform and migrating that application to cloud platform you must have a it is like you will face a lot of challenges i'll tell you let's say last time some years back I, I got an application which is developed in cobol okay and having a db2 database they want to migrate to cloud so somehow you with the help of my development team and everybody i managed somehow migrate this application okay but mm -hmm. once everything is in cloud the next issue i faced was this application which i developed which they had in cobol will not work in virtualized environments they need physical machines okay <laughs> the fund that challenge right in cloud platform i can how can i get a physical machine completely so then yeah. i have to basically wait for a, a third party cloud provider to give me some bare metal virtual machines right? so it was too hectic for me so this is what happens okay. every time okay that is why we have we must know that how this application architecture or design and everything can affect us in the life cycle method and what is sdlc process software development life cycle and how the security tools and vulnerability management process will address the cloud application security issues and the compliance factor so basically we'll discuss each of them in detail now okay that's it application security is a base definitely cloud computing is an advantage but basically when talking about legacy applications we can face a lot of challenges like this is the key things which you have to understand see this how the application security different cloud computing so let's say for example in the on-premises we have a lot of things which can basically contribute to the application security but what are the changes which we can have when we basically move to cloud computing and how we can mm -hmm. have SDLC in the cloud platform and how we can basically use cloud capabilities definitely cloud is providing a lot of capabilities but how these capabilities can bring up the secure applications in the cloud platform so all these things are which we have to understand in detail okay that's it so basically as you know that in the cloud platform we have a lot of advantages like for example let's say in the cloud platform itself they have a baseline of security so what is security baseline a standard level security that will always be there that means that every service you are taking in a cloud provider will be having a predefined set of security controls and a baseline level of security the rest you have to configure but a baseline level of security they have like the responsive responsiveness means basically all the things you're doing in the cloud platform is the api calls right so because you're mm -hmm. doing it on the api calls it is more responsive actually it can and definitely uh, even if even if we call it as isolated it is definitely multi-tenant why because even if it's multi-tenant it's basically giving you isolated structure let's say for example i want to test an application okay so what is the problem with testing an application let's say for example i have an application i want to test in my production server how can i test the application you you because why because even tested and also what happens is when I deploy an application, that application may work or may not, or it can basically affect other applications running in the same scenario. I, I'll give an example, very simple example. Now you can see that in my laptop, I have something called as a virtual box installed for PM virtualization. I have a virtual box installed here, but my challenge here, my challenge here, this is okay, fine. But my challenge here is I have a Linux machine. You can see that everything is here. So when I, if I installed Docker last time, I, I, this is what I faced, okay? So everything was working fine. If I started, it will work, everything is fine. But suddenly one day I have, I have installed Docker on this, Docker, mm -hmm. containers platform. At that yep. time, I have faced the issue, which is something called as, at that time in the Docker environment, I have faced the issue. And that issue, which I faced, 
is something like you know once i installed docker this vmware stopped responding or oracle virtualbox stopped responding why because then only i came to know that if i basically run docker it will basically stop the virtual machines basically take some files and disable the virtual machine capability so okay. i was stuck at some point so like this one application can affect other applications or basically sometimes uh, other application integrity can be broken the os can be broken it can cause some damage if it's a malware it can also again make some mistakes so basically the testing an application requires a sandbox effectively testing an application requires a sandbox sandbox means an isolated testing environment so basically yeah. in the on premises creating one like this is hectic at the same time cloud platform is already having sandbox let's say for example i want to test an application it's very simple i'll show you that see this if i want to test an application i don't have anything i don't i don't want to do i don't have to do anything see this just log into this account next okay so here i am going to deploy a virtual machine okay i am going to deploy a virtual machine or so in the virtual mm -hmm. machine definitely uh, the same kind of issues occur but if you take a service called as elastic beanstalk what is elastic beanstalk we discussed right elastic beanstalk is something which you call as the fast thing so basically what happens is right. if i want to test my application or deploy my application i can do it within a few clicks see this so i click on create application mm -hmm. I just select the platform I want, like Java, PHP, whatever it is. I upload my code and run it. So what the advantage here? This will act like a sandbox, right? It is not having any relation with the outside. Is it clear? The cloud platform by default itself, you have a lot of sandbox and all, okay? That's it. So basically, it will give me more isolated or sandboxing kind of things. And it's completely segregated. And we have an independent virtual machines. We have elasticity and scalability. And, and basically, nowadays, what happens is DevOps can be more effectively implemented in cloud platform. And all the things we are doing, including networking, load balancing, virtual machines, storage, and everything can be accessed from a single console. Got it? These are the challenges. Like, for example, definitely, we are going to a third party guy. That means that based, if it's IaaS, it's fine. But when you go for PaaS and SaaS, mm -hmm. you don't have much visibility. Why? Because yeah. you may not have proper visibility or availability. Why? Because sometimes uh, you, when you go for a PaaS application, you, you don't have access to the log files. You basically have to trust mm -hmm. from something which is given by the cloud service provider. Got it. Mm -hmm. And the next mm -hmm. one is definitely uh, the management plane or metastructure, which also called as metastructure. So basically, mm -hmm. the management plane directly affects the security of the application. And definitely, in the in, in the, some interviews and all, somebody if they ask you what do you call a single point of failure in cloud platform, single point of failure in cloud platform is the management console. So basically, it's super sensitive. And also, like we have a lot of threats also there. The transparency is not that much there. So basically, it is having definitely a lot of advantages. Like the same way, it is having a lot of drawbacks also. Okay. Wait. See this. So basically, these are the major aspects which you have to understand in the cloud platform: application security architecture, so SDLC or software mm -hmm. development lifecycle. And uh, nowadays, what happens is, even if I say the word SDLC, now it is a bit more of to secure SDLC. There is a model called as secure SDLC. That means SDLC mm -hmm. which can be implemented in a secure way. So cloud computing affects all the aspects of SDLC. That's complete from the from the phase of requirement analysis to the all the SDLC phases. Cloud computing mm -hmm. is having some kind of effects or uh, kind of interaction. So basically, mm -hmm. we must make and definitely when you, norm, normally what are steps of SDLC? I'll tell you. So basically, let's say requirement analysis then define design develop test and deploy sometimes okay so but in the cloud platform we have one more thing which is called as decommissioning or deleting you have to right. once the application requirement is over you have to remove it also securely right so basically like yep. this we have a lot of challenges okay then we have to worry about the compliance actually why because compliance will definitely affect the data like for example let's say we have a country or let's say we have some regulations regarding cryptography encryption and all we have to comply with that tools and services in the cloud platform itself what happens cloud introduces a number of new challenges around the tools and services which is required to build and maintain running applications so anything and we have a lot of vulnerabilities also okay so basically the the primary thing is uh, application security focus on the security in the development, deployment, and operation. Each of the activities which we are doing should be looked at a closed loop process. Like for example, from the beginning to the fixing of the issue, we must have a 
clarity on the things. Okay, that's it. So mm -hmm. let's discuss about detail about this SDLC. So SDLC is definitely there. The first word I want you to remember always is called as threat modeling. Let's say for example, I am using a Linux machine. Okay, so basically for Linux threat modeling means basically I have to identify in which all aspects I can expect the threats to be coming to this particular Linux machine for Windows machine for cloud platform. So for everything for my application. So let's say for example, I am developing an application. Let's say for example, I am developing an online shopping site. So for an online shopping site, what all kind of threat will be there? Like for example, let's say availability issues, DDoS attacks, or let's mm -hmm. say uh, what do you call that? Carding issues. Carding is there. Nowadays it's very common carding. Then we have something mm -hmm. called as history attacks. Like we have a lot of attacks which can affect. So basically understanding in what all threats can be coming to this particular application is called as threat modeling. That is a primary mm -hmm. thing. Okay. The second thing is access the application. And definitely we have two words, black box and white box. Okay. So black, white box mm -hmm. means, don't forget, white box means, or static both. Okay. White box or static means, I am testing the code. Don't forget. Let's say I have a piece of code. I want to know if the code is functional. That's what you call as white box testing. What is black box testing? Testing the complete application in the perspective of an attacker. That's what you call as black box testing. Yeah. And definitely, you know what is a vulnerability? Vulnerability means a weak point, actually. And definitely, I have to verify and validate all inputs. So give me an example for an attack which can happen if the user input is not validated properly. SQL injection, toss-out scripting, all these things are basically yep. a part of because of in, improper input validation. Okay, mm -hmm. these should include both the consumer policies and all relevant cloud provider resources. So basically, what happens is the cloud provider comes in with gives you a lot of options. Okay, so basically the cloud provider gives you firewalls, some checkpoints, and everything. But basically. You must know you must talk to them additionally regarding your specialized requirements and everything must be coordinated effectively Okay, and basically then we have a SDLC checkpoints. So SDLC checkpoints what they do is they basically define and implement the process Okay to verify the application meets the security architecture before going to the cloud provider Let's say for example, I want to verify my application is meeting all the requirements to move to cloud before I take it to the cloud provider Okay, that's mm -hmm. it. And by the end, once I deploy, I have to verify that the cloud provider must be able to meet the security requirements as per the standard requirement. That's what I call as SDLC checkpoints. Okay, that's it. Yeah. This domain, in some for some people, it can be tough. Why? Because basically not not familiar with it. But for you, I am just giving it very simple. So basically, for cloud applications, these are the four main steps: define, design, develop, and test. So define means basically what happens is this is very common for every environment. Okay, what happens is let's say mm -hmm. the applications. So the the first thing, the first thing which is do the define. So in this in this particular step, we will basically do the requirement analysis. Like for example, I'll talk to the customer and basically I'll do the requirement analysis. And once I done that, I will basically create I will create a document which is called as SRS. What is SRS? Okay. Software Requirement Specification. And this document will be approved by the customer. Okay. And in the define phase itself, I am basically starting my security assessment. Don't forget. In the, des in the design phase itself, I will basically start talking about the different security issues which can come into the scene. Okay. And the next one is I basically design the application. Define means I am basically in the requirements and pre preparing the documents. And based on that, I will I will design an application structure. This is how the application works. So from here, when you click on this, it will go to this. Likewise, you will design mm -hmm. the application as per the customer requirement. Okay. And basically the threat model and don't forget the exam. They will ask you threat modeling is a part of design phase. Don't forget threat modeling is a part of design mm -hmm. phase. Clear. Yeah? Okay. And once you done that, you basically go to development phase. So this is the longest phase. This is the longest mm -hmm. phase in the SDLC process. Why? Because basically we have to develop the code, actually review the code, test each and every code units. Okay. So don't forget when I say about static analysis, I am talking about the code. I'm mm -hmm. I'm testing a piece of code that's static analysis and by the end you come you complete an application and that application is tested for vulnerabilities like black box testing dynamic analysis and functional what is functional testing to see if the application is functional like for example when you click this button is it showing some error or going to the next page properly like this each and everything must be done in the functional testing okay and quality okay. assessment also this is the common steps for yep. SDLC. and finally we have something called mm -hmm. as destroy now destroy is also there what is destroy phase removing the data once the application mm -hmm. reaches end of life, I have to remove the data. That's what you call as destroy. The destroy phase basically what happens is, okay, in the destroy phase, I have to basically remove the application securely. Tell me what is the best way to remove an application security in the cloud platform? Best way to remove something? Crypto shredding. Yeah, yeah cryptographic erasure. 
data yeah. you have you will erase the data and you sorry you will encrypt the data with the key file and the key mm -hmm. file is another key file okay mm -hmm. so i'll tell you one more question. in in azure we have a concept called as key encrypting key k e k that means that okay. i have a data i can encrypt that using a key file and that key file can be encrypted using a k k e k key encrypting key okay that's it that's what we call as sdlc okay so basically don't forget the design phase threat modeling is used to used to identify and locate the security countermeasures the design phase is required a detailed review on the system key process such as authentication and authorization in the develop mm -hmm. okay and in the development phase also okay basically in the development phase as, as you know we basically develop the application okay and so this is from where the actual code development starting okay that's it